Stop the boat, man. Stop the boat. What? Why? Have you guys heard about the sale going on at GoodlandSquad.com right now for Black Friday deals up to 70% off site-wide? Wait, isn't there also 30 to 70% off apparel, baits, terminal, and storage? And you forgot 20% off rods and reels. But wait, there's also 30% off bundles. It's only at GoodlandSquad.com. Ah. Welcome back to another Guggen Squad episode, y'all. On this series, we are going to be, for the next 24 hours, surviving in the wild. We're heading out west where the cactus are, where the turkeys are gobbling, where the goats are being goats, and where the beautiful water, pristine clarity of Possum Kingdom is. We're going to be fishing for a multitude of species. We're going to see if we can survive in the outdoors and we are even going to be visiting a hatchery where they make these little things right here the lmbs the smallmouth bass all those beautiful creatures that we love to interact with so stay tuned for an action-packed series happening now coming up the oh my god bro oh, oh! i got the ball right there <laughs> get him Up. Ready. Yeah, we're just here at the HQ right now getting getting everything situated. I'm trying to think any last minute things that we need. Definitely gonna need lunker logs. We got crappie stuff loaded with that crappie stuff in this boat. How's your uh, how's your hook selection? Very hook weight good. selection. Extremely good. Always good. Always I know good. it's always good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we're covered. I think we're ready to go. So uh, we got some of the new apparel on. You're looking very slizzy right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sliding in very slizzard like. You know what? That's what we don't have enough. We need we need a couple of slizzies. Ooh, yeah, I, I didn't bring any of those. We might encounter some big bed, uh, big bedfish. That, that that might want some of that. I've got I've got the crappie on. You know, looking pretty fly with, with the crappie. We're definitely gonna catch some of those right there. I'm hoping we're gonna put some of those in the skillet tonight. Because <laughs> guess what? We're camping. We're sleeping outside. Dude, I have not gone camping since I was 10 years old. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah, it's been a long, long time. Oh, it should be an interesting video then. Stay tuned. I like me some watermelon red, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm grabbing me a pack of these right here. All right. And the water's clear. We're fishing clear water. Yes. All right. Go natural colors. Yeah, yeah. wrong. You got some, some polarized moments. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. We're going to be all right. Don't forget, we are here in Crumb 2345 Nail Road. Our largest selection anywhere on planet Earth of Guggen baits. Yeah. Everything Guggen. Not everything. just baits, but everything. And it's a store experience. You can come in here, check out all the paraphernalia, all the good stuff here. Uh, we got all the apparel, tools. It's like walking into a Guggen museum. And we're open Thursday through Sunday. Thursday through Sunday. Come on down and get you some. My, my loves in the outdoor life, hunting, fishing, camping, we're doing two out of those three. And it's amazing weather, 75 degrees right now. It should be cool tonight, great for a little campfire. Woo! I'm yeah. excited for that. Dude, I have literally have not been camping in decades. I'm excited to be out there in the great outdoors, see what happens at night when you're just sleeping there with all all the critters, the all critters, the creatures. The critters will be out. Yeah, you never know what's gonna happen. Might, might get a little something in your sleeping bag. Who knows? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't bring a sleeping bag. I'm going. I'm going all natural, dude. It's straight you up. You didn't bring a sleeping bag. No, I'm no sleeping bag for me. I'm just going straight up, just sleeping on the ground. <laughs> do people do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. In desperate times. <laughs> <laughs> this lake that we're going to, Possum Kingdom, has a little history of some big bass, like. I know your your PB. We've been on this quest. Yes. To to break the PB of eight and a half pounds. I eight, no, eight, eight on the dot. Eight, eight on the dot. On the dot. Oh, okay. Eight or bigger. All we right. break it. So last year I had a bass nine and a half pounds. Uh, John had one that was ten pounds. Oh my gosh. Uh, here recently in the last couple weeks, just looking at some posts I've seen. There's been uh, quite a few bass over 10 pounds that have been caught. And so 
the opportunity is there. I think we will at least see with okay. our Mondo optics. Yeah. We will see a fish swimming around that is over the 10 pound mark. Wow. We may not be able to catch it, but this water is just so clear that, you know, the fish are kind of educated. Those big ones are smart, but we'll be able to look at some big ones, I do believe. Oh, well, I have not seen a 10 pounder since our Mexico trip. That's the last time I've seen a 10 pounder. Long time ago. And I know these bass are educated, but I'll tell you what. I know they haven't seen the dupe too. I think that's gonna smack it. Yeah, no, no, it's an excellent bed fishing bait too. I, I would imagine we'll probably see some bedding fish and then maybe some some big females are just cruising or, or uh, fry guarding, just kind of chase around some bluegill. Fingers so. crossed, guys. Hopefully, we can make it happen. Stay here. There he goes. There he goes. Mike's first interaction with the desert park here. See, he lost his hat. Whew. Almost lost the juice, boys. Don't forget, always need a hat when you're out fishing. Cookingsquad.com, your favorite creative code, 10% off. Woo! We're here. Possum Kingdom. This is home for the night, y'all. We got some oak trees here, a couple of cedars. We are right on the water. We'll be able to listen to the fish. They can whisper their secrets to us while we're dreaming. It's gonna be great. So a little uh, fire pit here. We've got a picnic table, standard unit for uh, you know Texas State Park water spigot. No electricity. We're out here, you know, enjoying the finer things in life. So I see we uh. Get our little sleeping arrangements set up. Maybe get a few things out, get some tackle rigged, and then, dude, look, I mean. She's ready for us. She's right here. We gotta get in her. The four inch tube tube. We gotta get that four inch tube yeah. in there. Yeah, in there. All right, so we are gonna be hammock camping, suspended above the ground, breeze going under the undercarriage. It's gonna be nice. Yes, sir, get your, uh, Facing. Oh, oh there the Where the hammer's gonna go? There okay. you go. Since you're up. <sighs> All right. She ain't going nowhere. It's a hang at the right height. Moment of truth, guys. First time I've been in a hammock in over a decade. Let's see how she feels. Ah. Oh, she's holding. Ah. Oh, oh yeah. You are super close. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh we're gonna be real cuddly bro, <laughs> hey, good night, hey, catch a 10 pounder tomorrow. I like it, we're reviving. Oh this is, this is comfy. Yeah, this is the program for sure. I feel like I'm a baby again, oh. cuddled, cuddled. This is nice. Go ahead and just get like pre-set up for yeah for tonight's activities. Yes, sir. Wait, one more thing. <sighs> we're floating. I'm rigging. We be floating. What are you rigging up? A stupid dupe tube? Stupid dupe tube, my favorite. Check this out. Bring it all the way up until the jig head's right there at the top. There's the top. Then now you gotta poke out a little clasp. There's the line tie. You did that perfectly. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've done I've done a couple stupid dupe tubes in my in my day. And we're gonna just rig it right through the plastic like that. To expose it. Let's hide that hook point so we don't get snagged in those rocks and bam. Stupid rigged dupe tube. Okay, so we're literally camping right here, 300 yards from where the boat is sitting right now. I think today we'll probably stay close and try to get some largemouth bass, some quality largemouth, and you know, just just have a little sport fishing fun. Yeah. Try to catch some good ones uh, because tomorrow is going to really blow. The wind's going to be bad, and I, I don't know if we'll be able to. Uh, fish is effectively for bass, but yep. well, there's a lot of other species in the lake, so we're, uh, we only have so much food. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and tomorrow, I think the goal is going to be to... We gotta harvest. We gotta we, harvest. If we're gonna eat, we gotta harvest some food. So, uh, we'll stay here today, like kind of close, within two miles or so, fish for largemouth, and then the sky's the limit. Sounds good. We'll, we'll go after, we'll, we'll look at the stars tonight feel great and then we'll wake up and it'll be blowing 35 <laughs> and we'll go fight the elements and yeah. fight for survival. You gotta do what you gotta do. Let's get him.
think I'm taking you down with the three and a half inch stupid dupe tube. What do you think about that? Oh, huh? Yeah. A little one v one competition. What do you think? I, I think blind casting. I will. I will definitely win with the log. It's just log water, dude. Look at this. It's log waters. Little big bass competition. Loser. Loser jumps in the water at the end of the day. Loser gets no bed tonight. No bed tonight. Okay. Deal. <laughs> Oh, got him. No way. Yes, right sir. off the bat. Yes, sir. Woo! Oh, that's, that's a nice one, dude. Oh, I'm, I, I might be sleeping on the ground. Right? <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, she got <laughs> Woo! We're still safe, boys. That was quick, hey, though. You're dating. Oh, what are you throwing? The five inch? What are you throwing? Yeah, watermelon red? Standard unit. Can't be making mistakes like that in this competition, bro. Those guys over there said they weren't catching much, only four all day, so fishing might be a little tough, but. I think Rackley might prove otherwise. Can't run from the log? How are you gonna resist that wah, 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 wah action? Okay. He's not, oh, 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 there's a gill. Got him. Oh, you got him? Oh, what we got here? Oh, it's crappie. Oh, it's a big crappie, dude. Hey, that's dinner right there. Woo -hoo! That's a nice one. Crappie exists. Don't get me started. The day would be over. I don't know. We said we're fun fishing today. True, that's true. Tomorrow, I want this in a pan. This is lunch. All right, we're gonna get this fish back in the water. Clear water. See you, buddy. Yeah, you buddy. First yeah. fish of the trip. Yeah, first landed fish. <laughs> Moving on, we Wait. had one largemouth on, one crappie. That's, That's it. it. That's it. Yeah, we gotta try something new. It ain't working out. Got him. Oh. On oh, big and oh, giant. Where's, where's Ned? 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 Oh, Ned Rackley? Ned? Yeah. Where's Ned? Giant, dude. Huh? Oh. Where's Ned? It's in, it's in the bottom of the boat. It's in the hole. Oh my gosh. Bro! 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 Oh my gosh. Bro! Something's going out to sea, bro. Bro! Bro! It's, it's in that hole down there. This thing's oh. huge. It's coming up to jump. It's a bass. Oh my god. Bro. Oh! oh! I got this! What, what is that? I got a net, bro! What are you doing? What is I got that. It's not gonna fit in there, man. <laughs> I won't make it fit, baby. We got this, buddy. Oh, dude, just keep it pinned. You got this, bro. Hey. There's no way. Hey, I'm sleeping on the ground tonight. It's gonna get me in a tree. Oh, dude. Take your time. Take your time. I think I got a light line. On. Yeah, I know. Take your time. Keep pegs. Ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Get her tired, dude. We don't want her. We don't want her thrashing when I net her with my $15 oh, Amazon net. Again. No, don't. No jumping. No jumping! Rackley! Oh, dude, she's a beauty. She's a beauty. Come here. I might just land her with my hand. Yeah, dude. What's the She's method? tired. She's tired. She's tired. You got her, dude. You got her. You got her, baby. Come on. Come on, Come on Rackley! Get in there. Come on, Rackley! Get head in there. Come on, Rackley! Get in there, Get up, bro. Rackley! Come on, Rackley! Yes. <laughs> Woo Woo! Let's go, baby! Oh my oh gosh. My gosh. <laughs> We've been struggling. Dude. This is our first bass of the day. It's a mongo. Look at the tail. Look at the tail. Woo. Woo. Bloody tail. Full spawner. Look at that log down the hatch. Oh my gosh. She wasn't going anywhere. Oh my god. Let me let me get us off the rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get uh let me get the scale out. Man, it's been a it's it's been a struggle. We we just changed positions and uh, came out to like more main lake. And I don't know, 10th cast. With the with the wacky on that lunker log. Hey, undefeated lunker log. Bro, undefeated. You, you proved me wrong. I'm saying a six and a half. I'm saying six and a half. I think it's I think it's six. It's oh, got a bloody it's, tail. Look at that. Post spawn. It's not as fat as it could be, but she's long. Very long, dude. Let's see. I, that thing traveled a mile. Yeah, it really did. Alright, moment of truth. Six on the dot. Beautiful, dude. Nice fish. Yeah. Nice fish. How much do you think she would have weighed 
if she was, you know, full of eggs. I'm going to say close to seven. Yeah. Like, you know, probably okay. a pound. Yeah. Pound of weight. It's a really nice fish, though. <sighs> got to really smell it good because <laughs> fishing's tough. <laughs> and it, I, this water's clean. She got to smell super good in here. Out here. She hey, let, me, let me get a whiff. Let me get a whiff, dude. Get in there, yeah. <sighs> Let this beautiful fish go. What a fight. What a fight on light line, spinning tackle. Lunky log, undefeated. What a swim off. You can see that fish swim off forever. <sighs> beautiful. Fish! 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 It's in the tree! It's in the tree, Rackley! Rackley, it's in the tree! I'm, it's in, he's on it. He's in the tray. He's on it. I don't know how big it is. I don't know. I don't know come how big up, it come is. Come up here. Come up here. Rackley, I might have to go in. I might have to go in, Rackley. Come up here, dude. Let's see if we can get him out. Still on. Still on. I feel him. Feel it? Yeah, yeah. It's on that tree right there. See it? Yeah. I might have to go in. Thank you, I think I might have to go in. He's still on it. He's still on it. Oh, got us. Oh, she's off. Oh, it off? Oh, my gosh, dude, I don't know. I, I had her. Are you wrapped around that far branch? Uh, I, I think I might, I think I might be, yeah. Let me see if I can feel her. Oh, wait, 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 what was that right there? I thought I saw a flash. It, it, I think it's fudge, the dude. Dang, dude. I don't feel anything right now. I think they're not going my way today. Dude, look at what this fish was in, <laughs> yeah, man. You had, you had it against you from the get-go. That was a nasty tree with ropes, fishing line, catfish hooks. Hey, but look, we got a little something here. Yeah, we got something here. We figure, we're figuring them out. Quality bias. Yeah. Good job, hey. Can't win, can't win every fight. That's the way it goes. Dive in there, it happens. Yeah. I don't know what you do in that situation. Because I think might, I gotta jump in next time. I kind of thought you might dive in because you might. <laughs> if it happens again, guys, I'm gonna show you something real special. I think we got bit. Oh, I'm saying, I think we got bit on this point. Oh, oh don't lose stay it. on, baby. Don't lose it, Rackley. Yeah, scary. Don't, <laughs> Dude, don't I, you get her, off. If she jumps again, she's getting off. Don't let her jump. Watch out, swinging it. Swing it. Yeah, swinger, swinger, baby. Down. Swinger. Rackley. Let's go. Yeah. Dude, I thought she was Spit about to. Spit out like, a crab, dude. Oh my, wait, what, what the f What the fudge? Wait, <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second, what? Wait, are we in? What the hell is this, bro? I've what the never fuck? in my life seen that. <laughs> I've never seen that. Is this salt water with, with brackish? Is there salinity? What the hell is going on? I, I, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, I've in... never seen that in my life. It's alive! <laughs> it's alive! It's alive. He just, it just came out of this fish's mouth. He spit it out. <laughs> Forget about this fish for a second. <laughs> take your. That is a crab <laughs> in fresh water, bro, everybody. Take it. Take your catch. What in the. Guys, comment below, how is it possible we're fishing fresh water and if you know the species, look, give them a good shot of it. Let us know what kind of crab this is. Might be my most unique catch. <laughs> I've ever. never seen anything like that before. In fresh water. I had no idea these existed in lakes. Wait, is it a new species? Do we need to take a picture? Yeah, definitely take a picture. Yeah, definitely like take a picture. Here. We gotta get on some Google here. I might have to send a quick picture to my boy Leo. Dude. Freshwater crab. Yeah. yeah, and then flip it. Let me get the backside too so we can get a. Look at those big claws. Those yeah. Are, that looks like a stone yeah. crab. Yeah, yeah. I'm sending it. I'm sending pics to Leo right now. Googan crabs? Yeah, <laughs> Googan crabs. Do we need to make one? <laughs> that is wild, you guys. I've never, ever seen that in freshwater. I've heard of mussels. Yeah, mussels I've heard of, yeah. Mussels in freshwater. I've even heard of some freshwater shrimp, but never a freshwater crab in a lake in the middle of Texas. What? Man, when you go out fishing, you never know what's gonna happen. That's the beauty. Started out today, got skunked, nothing. Saw fish, couldn't get in the bite. Then we came for the juice. Caught a giant, lost a giant, spit up a crab. Let's keep fishing. Who knows what else is gonna happen? <laughs> Oh, oh go. go Rackley. Oh, baby. Yeah. Little buddy. More crabs, more crabs. <laughs> Check the gold, baby. Woo That's a crab slinger. <laughs> Zero crabs. No crabs. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's angry. Little guy. Little guy. Respect the fight, though. 
No. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Oh, 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 the big one. Oh, big Bradley. one. Come on, baby. Oh, I thought he was, I thought he was gonna be big. He about yeah. to jerk the rod Check out the of crab. Check the crab. Check the crab. Woo! Outside of the mouth? Or you know, you got in them. Oh, you got a two hook. They're just slapping it, but got a little action going. You, know, you don't know what you're gonna catch out here on the main lake. We started out in a pocket. We were looking for spawning fish and we come out to the main lake and it's like he might get a dinker or you might get the one. Mike, I know you've been pretty happy with the reels. Oh dude, I have this is literally my favorite reel I've ever used under two hundred dollars. It's a bold but, statement. Yeah, and I've used a lot. I've used a lot. This thing has performed flawless. I've caught everything from Oh I got oh I got it on the paws, bro. I got bit. Yeah. I got bit on the paws. I've caught everything from half pound bass all the way up to 45 pound striped bass on this reel. Souped up drag system on this gold series performed flawlessly. You've probably seen, I've skipped tubes, 20 skips on this reel. Everything has performed to perfection. The dual braking system, centrifugal plus magnetic makes casting a breeze in any condition. Absolutely love it. Hit a home run. You guys gotta try it when they, whenever they come out. Probably soon. I'm thinking soon, right, Rackley? Yeah, soon. Hopefully soon. You know, another thing that is overlooked that I really prefer over like the most expensive reels I've ever fished too are the grips. I know that's like one of those little things, but these things are shaped to fit your your thumb and forefinger the way you naturally hold it and it's curved to that. There's slightly twisted. That plus it has like a topo contour to it. So even when it's wet or you got slimy fish hands, you grab onto this thing and it's a solid connect. Perfect cast. Got him. Time. Little got, guy. And you got another fish. Little Rassy's guy. got another one. Check for crabs, bro. Shad. Check for crabs. Gotta check for crabs. <laughs> dude, that's a small Wait, mouth. Wait, it's a small mouth. That's a small mouth. Smally. I have, I've never what? caught a small mouth out here, dude. That's crazy. That might be what's hitting us a lot of times. Holy cow, a small mouth. Years ago, this lake used to be full of them, and they had a fish kill, and it killed off almost all the small ones. Wow, they're making a comeback. Yeah, that guy I, looks kind of fat, bro. You might need to check the belly on that he's one. He's a youngin. He's been crabbing it up. That is nuts. That's good. That is awesome to see. This is a smallmouth looking spot, a lot of boulders. I wonder if that big one I had was a good mm. smallmouth. It's possible. That is so cool. Good to see those are uh, in here, maybe making a comeback, but. Yeah. You actually showed me something uh, that you did on the reels the other day. Oh yeah. And I started doing it. Okay. Because usually I run, I run one break, one centrifugal, and then I'll use the magnetic. Two if it's like really windy. But you were running no centrifugals the other day. Yeah. And like for pitching and flipping, mm -hmm. if you need that extra. Oh yeah. You know, a little slide. And yeah. Shh, real easy. You can go in here and actually turn all the brakes off. So I've got actually one on right now. Actually, I got, I got two on. But you can turn these all off by pressing them in, and then you can do just full magnetic. So you can adjust that right here. So if you want to like switch to pitching and flipping, if you're used to having hardly any uh, pressure on your spool as you're casting, you're really good at bait casting, you can go with the, just the magnetic and get even more distance and have more control that way. But I would recommend putting one, one or both, or one or two centrifugals on if you uh, have never used the reel or you're just getting used to it. But once you get used to it, you know, you can go straight magnetic if you want. But just full adjustability, you know, for throwing big swim baits all the way up to throwing light jigs, stuff like that it makes it real easy to customize for what you're fishing. Boulders, I think. Oh my gosh, here we go. Crack light. Here we go. Oh gosh, big? it feels good. Oh my gosh, here we go. Here we go. Do we need net? What do I got here? This thing, this thing pulls real hard. Wait, it, do we need net? Net? Net coming. Oh. I'm here. I'm here. Oh my I'm gosh. Here. Dude. I'm, what do we got? Striper? It's like a giant smallmouth. We have not seen it yet. Oh my gosh. Dude, how big? It's. it's what a fight. Yeah, play him, play him, play. Oh, it's pulling drag. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just curious to see what the F you oh. got here. 
Got a freaking carp or what? I might. I might. <laughs> you might have real a weird. You might be a freaking giant. I see, see, I see it. What is that? What is that? Oh, what's it? Striper. What, striper. Is that a striper? I can't tell. I still don't know. It's a, it's a striper. Oh, it's, it's, it's a striper. Oh, huge striper. <laughs> huge striper. <laughs> Woo That's a fun time. Oh, my. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Bring it to the That's next. dinner. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that hybrid, dude. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Woo! Now that is a fun fight, y'all. <laughs> Holy cow. Good. Hey, Woo! I'm gonna leave that fish. You got some hooks uh, yeah, in the there, net. There's no. some prob oh yeah. my gosh, you got that little fabric net. That's gonna be <laughs> yeah, probably that's... gonna be here for a minute. Yeah, I'll, I'll, help I'll you take out. it though. That was yeah, a fun fight. Out. So this reel actually has 20 pounds of drag on the gold series. So if you wanted to lock that down. Like Mike did the other day. You caught a 40 pound striper, right? Correct. 40 pounds. Yeah. That's nuts. Obviously, you don't need 20 pounds for bass fishing, but it's there if you need it. You got pliers, bro? Yeah, I got pliers. Right, fly, fly it up. I am this guy. That's what had me before. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know what it was. Yeah. Woo! Man, these things are scary. Yeah, they are scary. Especially in this little net. I just want to get him unhooked so I can work on the other set of issues. Well, uh, we've got another day out here tomorrow, and we're kind of looking low on our food situation. And the challenge is going to be to catch what or eat what we catch. That right there, my friends, is a delicious meal. Meets lake regulations, so we threw it in the well because you know we may not. May not catch anything yeah. tomorrow. We're gonna you, have to. I've actually never eaten a striped bass before. I heard they're one of the best fish you can eat. Is that right? Dude, I got some butter, some, yeah. some salt, pepper, garlic. We'll do it up right in the skillet. Woo! You're not going hungry out here, my friends. No, sir. Got one. Oh, it's a crappie. Oh, no, no, what? Okay, Look that's that. black, black crappie. Wait, you caught a white crappie earlier. Now oh. you catch a black crappie. I, I, that's a male. A male, okay, yeah, the gotcha. Males get colored up like that. Ooh. <laughs> Good job, bro. Crushing it today. Got him. Dude, you called that. Well, it's a large mouth. Oh, shoot. Oh, come on, baby. Come on, on. Baby. Don't lose him. We're not going to lose him. Oh, it's, it's a good one, Mike. Get him, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. Finally, caught a fish today. I have never been skunked in Texas, and my friends, that is not, oh, he's off! Oh, oh no! Ah, ah, ah. Body slamming, dude. <laughs> we ain't getting skunked today, boys. Oh. The dupe tube did not completely let me down. Woo, look at that. Look at that post-spawn, dude. Woo! Hey. Yeah. You worked for that one, buddy. Yeah, I did. You we'll take that. that we'll take it. No crabs. Crabs? 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 No crabs. No crabs. I got a, got a rooster. I got a bleeder. Dude. I'm going to get him unhooked here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there she goes. There she goes. Oh, well, there I got you go. it on, though. Yeah. Guggen Chopper? Or we need another name. Some type of name. We got to name it. A chopper. I like chopper? it. Chopper? All right. The Chopper. Like there you go. Lure, right? Yeah, I like that. There we go. That is a post-spawn yeah. fish if I've ever seen one. Yeah, wow. you're right about that. Hmm. All right, guys. This fish has uh, been through it. Definitely needs to get some more calories. I hope you find lots of little crabs, my uh, little buddy. Get fat again. See ya. Boop. Ah, oh, We're doubled up, baby. Woo -hoo. Sir, a little sundown double. Yes, sir. That's it. We'll take it. Finally getting some fish. Yours are bigger, Definitely. not surprised. Woo, watch those hooks, my guy. Beauty. Bam. Oh, there she Ooh. Is. She's right Whoa, oh, oh my god. Bice. Yours triggered mine? Yeah. <laughs> they went off to the race. Woo. Well, guys, with that, I think we can successfully head back to camp, grill up some wieners, grill up the crab. Who knows how that's gonna taste? We'll find out in a second.
fun. A little fire starting oh, yeah. in the fun way. Ooh. So I got some cotton balls to kind of light it. Whoa, shit! What? Wait, you, didn't, you don't need no lighter, bro. You destroyed that fire. You destroyed the cotton balls. And that fat wood should, should ignite pretty good. And our next step is put our feather sticks on here. Beautiful. Dude, I've never seen someone start a fire so effortlessly. We'll see. We'll see if it holds. That's a fire. This is it right here, y'all. That's an impressive fire. Well, it is very dry here in Texas, so dealing with some dry wood. But got our fire started, got the brewskis cracked. I got one fish I gotta clean. Other than that, we're gonna, I, I think, what do you think? We could uh, throw this grate and cook the wieners? Let's try it. Style? Let's try to put the wieners on the fire. I think that would give it a little extra flavor, a little crisp. We've got food for tomorrow, just in case we can't catch anything in the moment when it really counts. Went ahead and kept this striper today. And uh, it's a pretty good size one, so. Beautifully sized one. In a pinch, you could definitely feed all of us. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Nice and dry, All right, here we have. <laughs> A, a micro dungeness, <laughs> a stone crab. I don't know. Look at those claws, man. How much meat Looks do you like think's on there? Like a stone crab, fiddler, stone crab. You pop those little claws and just like a little corn kernel, a little corn nut. Okay, Go, buddy. See what you taste like. <laughs> oh yeah. Is it gonna turn red? I mean, it's definitely it's definitely getting cooked. It changed colors. It went from, uh, I guess, whitish to a deeper orange color. Mm -hmm. Definitely looks cooked, no question. Now, actually, maybe you just want to pop it like a like a little popper. Put the whole thing in your mouth and chew it up like a sand crab. You ever see people eat sand crab? No, you can eat sand crab. I mean, I've seen people eat them. I'm oh, just gonna eat it whole. Step one is remove it off the pan like so. Okay. Step two, we gotta examine it to make sure it's fully cooked. I would say that's fully cooked. And now, if you look at it, actually, one claw is pretty small, the other yeah, one's yeah. way meatier. I think oh, we go yeah. for the meaty claw. Yeah, yeah I think just try to go for that big one yeah. and see what happens. Now, I'm going to smell it first. Okay. Let's give it a good whiff. It smells like a crab. It smells yeah. pretty good. It smells, you don't have to eat it. You can smell it. It smells pretty okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It smells it pretty smells nice. Like, you know, red lobster. <laughs> now, I wish I had some Cheddar Bay biscuits right now. Now, we're going to we're gonna pick off the claw. Yeah. Fighting the bugs a little bit here, so. Pick off the Sorry, claw folks. right here. All right, we got the claw, it came oh, right oh, off. Oh, okay, so it's cooked well. Yeah, I think it's cooked pretty well. So, I'm gonna put it in and try to chew off the meat. Is that the deal uh, right here? I don't know, it's, it's gonna be crunchy. What do you got on that? Bro, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Is it really? It's pretty freaking good. Oh my god. It's pretty, that's the best crab I've ever eaten. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm from Maryland. That here. might be the best crab I've ever eaten. Are you telling me are you telling me Bro, this is a delicacy? You might want to eat that other claw. No, it's that, up to you. That other claw is tiny. Yeah, I know, I know, but you know the flavor. How did, how did the texture, how did the how did it It was crunchy, but it was not a hard crunch. It was soft because it was cooked well, so it, it went down pretty easy. And how did it compare to other crabs you've had? Similar taste I mean, it had a. Totally I mean, different. I'm not gonna lie. I definitely had some bacon flavor. I think <laughs> <laughs> I definitely had some bacon flavor, but it had a really nice flavor. It, it was very nice. It was very good. Well, there you have it, folks. I'm pretty sure that is the first uh, ever, whatever cra kind of crab this is, <laughs> freshwater crab, uh, tasting. And uh, if you could scoop up about a hundred of those. <laughs> You, you might get a couple bites of food. <laughs> I don't know. Freshwater micro crab boil. Yeah, could be a thing. Could be. Uh, well, I commend you. You can you can now sleep in your. Oh, thank you. I appreciate. I don't want to get stung by scorpions. That would not be a fun time. Table fair coming off the fire. Jalapeno poppers with cream cheese. Cream cheese going everywhere. Oh, yeah.
a little messy, but goes good with a cold brewski. You chopsticking it up? Ah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is nothing better than a hot, fresh meal after camping out all day in the water, getting my ass kicked, and catching a couple fish in the end. This is living, boys. You gotta get out here. Kind of unplug a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and that's really important. Now, like when I was a kid, I, we no one had phones, and it wasn't as right. important. But nowadays, everyone's just glued to their phone. Really important just to come out, enjoy the great outdoors, get away from technology a little bit. Get away, sit up above a primitive campfire, look at the stars. You know, get a few fish on the line. Get a good hammock sleep. Yeah, I, I don't know what that's gonna be like. I'm curious. End of the day here. We got some quail. Yes, sir. Let's cheers to that. <laughs> uh, mine's really hot. Why don't you go ahead and just take a nuclear bite? <laughs> hey, Get I'll go for it. First hey, bite of quail. You love hot stuff. I do. Mmm. Mmm. How is it? Mm. Tender. Juicy. <laughs> Ooh. Got some kick in the jalapeno. Mmm. Okay. Oh. Cooked just right. Perfect. Open flame. Yeah. Gotta love it. Um, I think this is it for the night. Yeah. This is a nightcap right here. It is. It is. <sighs> you guys, we're going to call it a night here. We'll see you in the morning. Rackley is planning a special breakfast. Mm. We'll see you guys there for that. All right. Uh, I'm heading in. Good night, boys. Good day's dangle. I'm settling. Kick the crocs off. Oh yeah. See you in the morning, boys. Good night, bro. Well, good morning, everybody. The sleep last night. Let's talk about that. I don't think we could have asked for a better night to sleep under the central Texas sky. Stars were beautiful. Um, no wind rocking us around. Just crickets, the occasional bird. It was pretty awesome. Uh, up until about three in the morning, that disturbing time in the morning when the creature, the creature came into the camp. I'm not 100% sure what it was, but everyone, everyone said they heard it come right next to him and it was, it was sniffing like, <laughs> was doing some weird sniffing action. I got up and I heard the sniffing and it was all around me. I, I can see the shadow around Mike and I peered up and I just saw this, this, what looked like a big tail. And I think it was a porcupine. A porcupine. I've only seen a porcupine like once in the in the daytime. So it was very strange. We had uh, we had an odd creature come into the camp last night. After that, I didn't sleep well. I don't think anybody slept well. Worried about you know porcupines sniffing our sniffing our rears. So uh, I feel pretty good though this morning. You know we had a great dinner last night. Vibes were good. We were expecting really heavy winds this morning and now we got calm conditions, so feeling good about it. We're gonna cook up some three cheese wieners, some eggs, and we're gonna start today's uh, challenge. Mike, why don't you take a bite of that wiener and tell me mm. how it is. All right, putting Rackley sausage going in my mouth. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm, mmm. Wow, steamy. Thick, juicy, oozing. Look at that white <laughs> cheese ooze out of there. <laughs> Woo! That's how you start the morning off right, yes, boys. Yes, sir. Yes, mm. sir. And we are about to crack some farm fresh eggs into the skillet. So we have a challenge going today. 
Uh, basically, we're going to eat a huge meal right here, and then anything happening beyond this, we've got to catch what we're going to eat. So you know, this is this is the only way. There's no catching wieners and eggs and sandwiches. It's, Dang! If you told me fish. what, hey, if you told me that's what we're doing last night, I would have put a hurting on whenever it was crawling around our camp last night. We could have cooked that thing up flare style. Oh, you could have stabbed him. <laughs> Not get better than that. You know how we do. Eat good. Mm. So we're going after it all today. Everything's on the table. We've got crappies, white bass, there's hybrids, there's stripers, which the lake record striper in here, 34 pounds. Dang, in fresh water, that's massive. Yes. Woo! So there's some huge ones. Of course, we have large mouth. I don't know if you want to eat those. But we are going to experience the, uh, the full dinner table out here on the lake, and then we're actually going to go to a fish, fish hatchery that's right on the water and they're gonna show us how they grow these fish. So cool. they've got small mouth in there that they're trying to introduce. They've, they've got large mouth, they've got the striper, all that fun stuff. So we're gonna get a first hand look at it. Woo. Get a turd. That's right. So we're seeing the whole ecosystem and uh, the facilities. Uh, we're gonna fill our bellies here and then once we hit the water, no snacks. Yes, sir. No, no lunchables, no None Buckies. of that. Nah, we got to work for it. We've got to work That's for it. Right. We've got a full day of grinding ahead. If we don't catch, we don't eat. Come on. Come on. The Goo Goo Chopper. Woo hoo. Oh, it's pulling drag runs big. Is it? I don't know. It's big. It's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. Woo. Got here. Is this a new species? It might be. White bass? Let's see. Oh, it's only big bass following it. Oh, it's a, it's a small mouth, dude. There's another, another big bass following it down there. Dude, oh. down there. Get in. You rigged up? Hang it's on, following. Dude. I'm going to leave in the water. I'm going to leave in the water. What? There's two. There's two. There's two. Oh, they're right. You can see him. Watch the look. Watch the look. You can I see him. Dude, they're right there in the water. They're chasing it. They're chasing it. I'm right here. He's right there. I'm I see coming. him. He's right there. Drop it. Yeah, drop it down. Dig it. Dig it. Dig it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right there. Right there. They're down there. They're chasing him in. Oh, I don't know if we're catching him, but hey, that was pretty cool. Cool way to start hey. the morning. Wow. Woo! Ah, the Guggen Chopper never lets me down, baby. Actually, I think I might have hooked it on the outside of the mouth. A little swiped at it. A little swiper. Literally just put the boat in. Rackley was rigging it up, so I figured might as well make a couple casts from the back of the boat. Landed uh, fish number one of the day. This is not... Yeah, we don't want to eat this guy. We can sniff it, but uh, this guy is going back in the water. See you, little dude. Appreciate that. Get the skunk out of the boat for today. Boop. Wow. <laughs> you know, yesterday it, it was like the end of the day where you finally caught a bass. Yeah. Now we can't even leave the boat ramp. Yes, sir. You brought I'll take a school it. of them with it that, with you. That was awesome. So yeah, we're not gonna eat bass. We'll probably catch some along the way. So do you want to do a little little side bet? Yeah. You a little know? side bet action. You took me down yesterday. Why don't we do who can ever can catch the most number of species today? What should a loser have to do? Um, well, hmm. I always have the hot sauce. It's back yeah. to the HQ. Oh, ooh, a dab, and the, a dab, oh, dab, a dab of that on something. Yeah, dab of the hot sauce on something. That, that's that's a good incentive. Yeah, I think we can do that. A little hot sauce action, the, the All right, classic. So whoever has the most species wins. Yes, correct. All right. it begins now. Clocking in, going to work. Yeah. Oh one. no, Rackley. Come on, baby. You're kidding me. Come on, baby. What is it? Oh, please be a large. Oh, White no! bass. White bass. Let's no, go. Yes, sir. Holy That's dude. caught. That's White bass. Cool. That was one we didn't see yeah. yesterday. Always my friend. All right, that's species number one for me. Mike's got a large mouth. I have a white bass. I'm a little nervous right now. Rackley caught one of the species that none of us caught yesterday. So he's off to a great start. I know he's gonna catch a large. Ooh, I might got hit right there. I'm ready a little bit behind, I feel. So I've actually switched to a bait that I don't think is on his radar. I think this is a bait that can catch. Oh no, on, oh my gosh, Rackley. Freaking go, Mark, no. Is it largey? Mark, don't lose no. it, bro. Don't lose it. Don't lose it, buddy. On the micro, so close. Oh, that's gonna be tough to land. That's a nice large mouth too. I can't 
remember what pound leader I put on. There she goes. Oh, oh, he's out of trouble. He's out of trouble. I don't think I can. Hey, my net is available. You're welcome to use my net. Oh, I've got him pinned. Oh my oh. gosh, you're actually. <laughs> that rod bend. Let's go. Woo. Snacky on the micro. Or <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm in a, I'm in a fish zone. Snacky, I, I'm telling you. No fish can resist that thing. It's just, it's like a little minnow. You know, they eat shad a lot, but there's also little minnows that swim around that they love to slurp. Easy meal. A little post-spawn meal. Good fish. I'll take it in a dirt, but today it's just counting as my large mouth. Got that one knocked out, so I am currently ahead of Mike. On. On? Crappie. No. Yep. No, Rocky. Yep. Oh my, look at how dark it is. Jet black. Oh my god. Hey bro, don't let this one go. We're gonna keep this one. This is my lunch. Alright. This is a crappie that is colored up. So this is what you call they have their tuxedo on. They are looking nice for the ladies right there. We'll make sure it's 10 inches. I'm pretty sure it is. 12 incher. Oh, going in. Beautiful. Yeah, hey, bro, three, three just like that. Going with the chartreuse gold blade. Cloudy conditions this morning. I need to catch up. Inline spinner is really a bait that can catch anything that swims. It also imitates a little minnow. Has a little flash, a little vibration. I need something to catch up. Rackley kicking my ass. So I've been calling this the chopper. We actually don't know the exact name yet. Go ahead and uh, drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think we should call this bait right here. Deadly. Looks like a largey. It does. <laughs> it's a white bass. Whoa, wow, another white bass. Really? Mike, you don't have anything to eat yet, do you? Not yet. Right now I'm starving, bro. I'm starving for fish, starving for lunch. Jeez. <sighs> Thriving up here. We're letting Mike out. This is an emergency situation. Might be a little rough, buddy. You keep fishing. I'm gonna get out here for a second. Yeah, that rock right there looks pretty decent. You're breathing heavy. Yeah, it's coming. It's brewing in there, man. <laughs> it's a brewing. If I get a little wet, I get a little wet. You already took a, a poop this morning. I know, but that one wasn't the one, though. This one's going to be the one. Are you? Oh. Well, how do I get from here to over there, though? <laughs> Holy oh, Just poop right there? I guess I could. We'll, oh, we'll give you some peace. Yeah. I guess I, I guess that's the deal. I'm just going <laughs> to be selling this deal. fuck taking a <laughs> luckily, luckily, you're an athletic young man. I gotta, I gotta get a spotted position here. Yeah, like this. I think this will be the deal right here. I think we can. Yeah, make you it got work. you got a nice uh, foregrip there. Yeah, you yeah. Can... <laughs> All right, we'll turn around. <laughs> Just holler when you're done. We did eat a uh, vast amount of jalapenos last night. So sometimes that can get a little wild in the morning. A pretty good feet right there, Mike. Dude, these wipes are, I need to buy me some of these. Those are game changers. Yeah, that's good. That's close. That's close enough. Yeah, don't get any closer. I don't want you to mess up your motor. Yeah. All right, go. Oh, watch the motor, bro. Watch the motor. We've uh, we've got some cloudy conditions here. Not too much wind. Uh, good conditions for a striper, low light. So we're going to head to another bluff wall that's got some real deep water and see if we can hook up on a stripey. You got something. Hooked up. Right, Another white bass. Oh Woo! You're white bass king, dude. There's got to be a striper around here. <laughs> Woo! All right. Jerk bait. Just, just get them. Oh, there's one. There's one. I got me a white bass. Just had to channel my inner Rackley, baby. <laughs> get in the boat. Woo! Wait. Yeah. Yep. That is species number two for me. Absolutely choked it right here. Let's try not to get a hook in our finger. Ah, got her under control. Rackley, you've got like 
six times as many fish as me, but you only up one species, I believe. Is that correct? Correct. correct. We're still in the game, boys. We are still in the game. Look at how they choked that front treble. All three hook points. That's how you know she wanted it. I gotta get in here, Theo. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, oh, right there. Oh, 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 it came up, dude. I figure ate it. Did you see that? I figure ate that. Woo. Oh, do I need to save one for lunch? I have never actually figure ate a white, I figure ate a large mouth. I've never figure ate a white bass before. I'm not sure if the GoPro caught that, guys, but what happened was, this fish right here followed my bait in, went down. I, I took the bait out of the water. I saw the fish. I dipped the bait back in, did the old figure eight that you do for musky, and this guy swiped it. This guy actually is not, I don't think it's big enough to eat, so actually I'm gonna let him go. But uh, another fish in the boat for me. Let's go. I think it's another white <laughs> If you're just reeling it in, it's a white bass. Okay. Yeah, it's a white bass. Oh, yeah, it's a white bass. They doubled up on the whiteies. Double them up. Boop. Woo! 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 A lot of trouble. Woo! Some of them are a little yellowish in color, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna need to borrow those when you're done, my friend. Got a whole lot of troubles over here. Yeah. Oh, exactly. One bait. One bait. Be a large it's gotta be, oh, big large Oh, big large. Big large. Woo! Oh, here we go. Yes, sir. Woo! You flip it in a what? That ain't even flipping. Holy <laughs> shit, bro. Yeah, get him in that net. Get him in that net. Oh, <laughs> I barely fit. Barely fit. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Woo! My oh, gosh. Getting dangerous <laughs> with them. <laughs> Woo! Look at that fish. Gee, look how long it is. Jeez. Brackley is do? the man. He is just putting on an absolute clinic today. He's got the species, got the mondos. All right guys, so I just picked up a swim bait because I was getting just thrashed on the jerk bait every time with the white bass. I was trying to get a striper, but ended up getting a big large mouth. And this is uh, this is the dangerous swim bait right here. This is a bass mafia bait. And I don't fish swim baits like this, these big ones, a whole lot, but gosh, they catch big ones. And uh, you know, Chris Saldane, he's the guy that designed this bait. He is a swim bait uh, connoisseur, and he knows exactly what he's talking about. All I can tell you is when you pick up these baits, you're kind of weeding out some of the small fish, but you get those bigger bites. It just has that good swimming action. It's rigged weedless. This is one of our Green Series uh, weighted swim bait hooks right there. Just rigged right on the top and swim it through cover, brush, rocks, all that good stuff. And man, you can fling this thing a mile. Like a windy bank like this, clear water. It's a good thing to throw. I, I think I'm gonna keep throwing it because that was pretty fun. Oh! Oh, I'm on! What is this? Crappie. What is this? It's decent. What is, what? It's long. What is that? Oh my god, that might be a striper. What is that? That might be a striper. Oh my, dude, what the heck? That, oh, it's a drum! It's a drum! We gotta get this in. We gotta get this in, bro. I'm not eating that hot sauce. My stomach cannot handle that hot sauce. We cannot be losing today, boys. Wait, is this a white bass or is it a drum? It's a drum. It's a drum. It's a drum. Sure, drum. It's a drum. Good one. We're fishing light line here, guys. We got a thin wire hook. We cannot lose this fish. Drum are extremely strong. We just gotta take our time here. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful drum. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Sir, in the net, yeah! Three all, Rackley. Game time, boys. We've tied them. Woo! He's got like 25 fish. I've got like five fish, but for the sake of the contest, we are tied three apiece. Is that a normal looking drum or is this a... I think it's normal, yeah. Dang. They call him a Gasper Goo. Yeah. Interesting. Well, whatever it is, I'll take it. Another species. Got him right in the mouth. Fair catch. He got little teeth on top of him too. Uh, we've only got, I think we've got less than an hour left to fish. It's gonna come, I think it's gonna come down to whoever can get four or five different species. I'm at three. Uh, we'll let this fish go. 
Let's get a little swim out, little drum buddy. There she goes. Woo! Hey, not the prettiest way to win, but I don't mind winning ugly. We're taking LFG down. No one was expecting the drum. You know, we we're like, oh, the striper would be awesome. Small mouth would be uh, an ace. No one expected the drum, so that's a huge advantage for Mike because I think we're gonna go into some marinas next and we both will have the shot at a bluegill. He could catch a crappie. You know, he could, he could very easily surpass me now getting that drum. So. That's it, Rackley. Game over, Rackley. Oh, what is that? I think it's a smallie. I think it's a smallie. I think it's a smallie. Stay down, baby. Stay down, baby. I got the legendary smallie. Get the boat. Yeah! Woo! Legendary, awesome lake smallie, baby. On the snacky. Rackley said it himself. The snacky catches everything. I just caught a drum five minutes ago. Next cast. Land this beautiful, chunky, smallmouth bass. How you feeling, Rackley? Not good. Oh no, it's Rackley's on. on. What has he got? On, white bass, bass, white bass, white bass. It's oh my gosh, it might be a smallie. Oh, is it? It's white a white bass, bass. dead gummits. Uh, white bass, okay, okay. I had a little fall. Dead gummits! I'm gonna lead, four fish to three. Let's go, baby. See you, buddy. Woo. Woo! That little fish probably just wrapped it up right there. <laughs> that little smallmouth. They're so hard to catch. There's not many of them. Um, Rackley has thrown in the towel, I believe. Let's uh, let's confirm the victory. Rackley? Confirmed. I'm eating that hot sauce. Hey, I mean, I was down three species to one. Then somehow I caught a drum. Then I caught a smallie. Yep. Oh, and then I caught a white bass as well. Sometimes better be lucky than good, what can I say? But that snacky swimmer, amazing bait. Catches, catches them all? Yeah, catches them all. It's a, it's a lake saner, for sure. Uh, we've got a crappie in the box, so part of the, the fun for today was eat what we catch. Yep, yep. Uh, we've also kept a striped bass from yesterday, never got one uh, today, but you have never had one. Never. So I think as your victory meal, mm. We will you're gonna, provide that. You're gonna cook for me as well. I will cook for you as well. Woo! My lucky day, guys. Woo! Woo nice fish. Beauty. Nice one, bro. Let's go, dude. I love the hat. White line. Beautiful hat, yeah, too. You got the clutch Always wearing it. gear on Woo! as well. Oh, I've got he's, like, got, he's got goose rods. I got like yeah. five rods. <laughs> on. Oh, yeah. Caught it on the crack oh, yeah. and crawl, white crack oh, and crawl. Yeah. Let's freaking go. How long are we working that for? Whoa. At least 45 minutes. Hey, worth it. Well, how, did you weigh her? How much she no, weigh? No, I weighed her yet. I'm about to. Oh, let's do it. Oh, on let's camera, see, let's man. do it. What we got here? 810. 810, let's, let's go. go. New, new PB. PB. Congrats, bro. That is awesome, bro. Absolutely. I caught the male like three times. Oh, was trying really? to catch it. Finally, I caught it that like third time. Bro, I gotta give you one right there. Bro, give me one right here. Thank you. Dude, we appreciate it. We appreciate your business. Looking sharp out here, catching Mondos. Need any baits while you're here? You're pretty loaded? Oh my gosh, okay. All right, well look, Googan out on the water, slamming Mondos. Why did we fish for crappie and white bass today? What were we doing? Bro, I wanna give you I wanna give you a gift from my personal collection. Oh, no way. Right here. here. Congratulate you for catching your PB. That was awesome. Googan Green bait casting reel. This is for you, my friend. That is awesome. Hey, you enjoy it. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it, man. You're Congrats. the first. You're the first to have one of those. Hey, enjoy it. Enjoy it, dude. Catch more, more giants on that. Hope oh, you yeah, get a 10 pounder. Cool. Every once in a while, we'll run into a fan out on the water, but I've never run into a fan that literally just <laughs> caught his PB, yeah, was, awesome. was decked out. I, that just, it warms my heart, right? Yeah. So cool. That's yeah. actually the first sub I've seen that's rocking the Black Series rod, too. Got yeah, the, got yeah, the yeah. premium, the goods. Literally yeah. caught his BB yeah. on the Black Series, yeah. crack and crawl. Yep. He was a yeah, poster child, think, <laughs> yeah, honestly. <really? laughs> Shout out to Easton. You know what? I, I feel bad being defeated and knowing I'm going to eat some hot sauce really sucks, but watching Easton. Yeah, watching Easton pull out. That, pig, ooh, ooh. that makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. It, it is a warm and fuzzy feeling. I'm feeling good. I'm also hungry. <laughs> that as well. So it is time to head back to our camp. We're gonna cook up some striper and some crappie for lunch. It's gonna be good. 
Sound good? All right, it has officially been 24 hours. We're gonna cook up the fish that we caught. I'm hungry, he's hungry, and Rackley is actually gonna eat the hot sauce as well since he was the loser of the multi-species challenge. Definitely got a little lucky, especially with that smallie and that drum, but sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. This right here is a beautiful crappie filet. Nice piece of meat carved out by yours truly. Truly an expert. We're gonna rinse this off once I get the other one, get that meat nice and clean. And then we're gonna put it in the skillet, fry it up with a little butter, little mm -hmm. Cosmos perhaps. Yes, sir. And uh, enjoy ourselves a nice little fish lunch. Oh yeah. There we go. Woo! Mm -hmm. I don't wanna mess up the crossing. Yeah, no. Let it cool just a second. This will melt in your mouth. Wow. When you say melt, you weren't kidding. Is that not amazing? It literally melts in your mouth. Like, I've never had meat. Well, <laughs> maybe, actually, I think I had a four or five Wagyu once eating mm. with you guys, and that, that didn't So You're essentially cooking meat on par with A5 Wagyu. That's impressive. Well. And this is a lot cheaper than A5 too, I'll tell you what. <laughs> this is this is redneck wagyu. <laughs> Got that striper handy? I do. Yeah. All right. Oh, yes, sir. Those are thick. Yeah, they are. It's gonna take a little longer than cooking the crappie, huh? A little bit. I think that striper is done, man. Woo! Look at that cast iron handling in it beautifully. There is not a single piece of stickage from that fish in that pan. That is impressive. Going in, striper. Mm. Firmer. It does not melt in your mouth, but I don't hate it though, because it's actually like more of a, like I can actually bite into it. Right. Because so I feel like I'm actually eating something. That crappie was something incredible. Melt, yeah. Yeah, this striper is like I'm actually eating a piece of meat. Flavor on point. Super mild, and then you can get that hint of that SPG seasoning. Really, really good. That's a really good fish. Man, really good fish. Uh, like the striper is just so much more firm. Yeah. I feel like it's the perfect baking fish or sandwich. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas the crappie would be really hard. It's kind of just falling apart. Yeah, it falls apart. apart. Yeah. But you know, get, get you a big chunk and a full review of your first time eating a striper. Come in hot, boys. Looking good. It's steaming. It's steaming. I think we gotta go in because my hand can't handle it. Oh. Oh wow. It's gotta be hot in your mouth. Usually, if it's really hot in my hands, I, I say, you gotta let it rest. Mm. That's a lot of meat in my mouth. I don't know if I've ever had that much meat in my mouth at once. Uh, mm. That sausage last night, you really stuffed mm. it in there. That's true. I think I might have a new fish, favorite fish to eat. Might be striper. Are you serious? I, I mean, the crappy melt, but I actually like the texture of the striper. I think I'm enjoying that more. Okay. I feel like I'm eating some meat rather than just eating like something you know, it just melts instantly when it touches your tongue. Okay. So we have done well. Oh yeah, you did amazing. I appreciate that. I gotta try a piece Yeah, of this. try get get a big piece in there, bro. Get a chunk of this stripey. It is totally different, yeah. but it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It does feel like you're you gotta chew it a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not too much though, it's still not tender. Too much. But it's not just not melting your mouth tender. That's awesome. Yeah, that's more like like a saltwater fish you would get. Yeah. Man. The lake. It's so bountiful. <laughs> it's amazing. I love catching cooks. So we are done with our fishing challenge here, our 24-hour extravaganza. Brackley and I are gonna go to a fish hatchery. It's gonna be super cool. We're gonna see tons of species. I don't exactly know what goes on in fish hatcheries, so I'm excited myself. We are going to tour a fish hatchery today. So awesome. This is where the magic happens, literally. And a lot of the fish are stocked in other parts of the state here at the Possum Kingdom Fish Hatchery. 
a lot of different species. We got Ryan as our guide to show us around. So let's get in here and let's see how they make the fish. I have never once been to any type of fish hatchery and I hear that this is where almost all the stripers in Texas are first hatched, perhaps. I think we're about to bag some fry up as a matter of fact. So we're gonna follow Ryan over here and he's gonna show us what's up. All right, so this part of the hatchery, these are raceways in here where they are, these are actively spawning smallmouth? Is yeah, that what you said? they're spawning right now. So if we walk inside, kind of be quiet, you can talk to them, just kind of talk to okay. them. Okay. Uh, they, they're a little skittish around people. They're so, making their uh, love. They need yeah, they, they, don't like, they don't like people. If you walk up on them, they'll scare off, okay. and, then they, and then they have to start over. So this is a race where we, raceway where they control the water temperature and pH and all of that stuff, perfect spawning conditions. And they have these these mats, these little uh, plastic mats, spaced out where it's far enough away where the males won't attack each other. The, the smallmouth are very territorial. I'm saying it takes a lot more space to spawn them because if you try to spawn them real close, they'll just attack each other. So they have these mats spaced out about 10 to 12 feet apart, and they go and they lay those eggs on the mats, and the, the males are guarding the fry on top of the mats. Right now we're in the striper hatchery where we've got eggs, they're actually, uh, they're hatched eggs, they're fried, and they're gonna load these fry up, and they'll take these to other parts of the state uh, for them to grow them as well. So this spot right here is where they stock all the other striper for Lake Texoma, any other place that has uh, hybrids of striped bass, they start right here little bitty tiny ones. There's some huge Dude, ones in there. Though. They're massive in there. I mean, those got to be 20, maybe some 25 pounders in there. Absolutely massive in these tanks. And we're going to see them bag up a bunch of fry in these bags and they're going to get shipped out to, uh, I guess, a bunch of lakes around here in Texas to uh, grow and for us to catch them. We call this the incubation system. So this, yeah. is, this is where after we spawn the fish, the eggs are put into these jars called McDonald jars. They have uh, upwelling water. So it keeps them from sitting on the bottom. They just sit there and balance the whole time. Uh, this whole system is temperature controlled and it's filtered. So it's recirculating filtered water. We add salt to it. So we maintain a, a little bit of salinity, which is good for the fish. And then uh, once they hatch out, they hatch out in about 48 hours. And then they'll spend about five days in these vats. So there can be up to a million per vat. This wow, one has about 900,000 in this one right here. Whoa, this one's a little lighter. How do you count that? Uh, <laughs> volumetrically. So we uh, take glass tubes, we pull them out, and we count them and then extrapolate how many extrapolate. in each one. Yeah. And what's the optimal water temperature to spawn? So we, we, uh, we hold the fish that are spawning. So the female fish and the male fish, we hold them about 68 degrees. Uh, we incubate them at 66 degrees. Okay. So, uh, 18.6 Celsius is, is what our target. Keep that in mind. You're on the lake. 66 degrees prime. We want to know how many of these fish make it to live and be in the lake. It's it's a hard question to answer because it really depends on the lake. There are lakes where we think we might have 50% survival. Wow. Uh, there are lakes where we know we have maybe five percent. It, it, it really varies on the on the lake, on the water quality. Um, you know, striped bass, they like to be out in the middle of the lake and deep parts of the lake. So lakes that are deep and clear, like PK or, or uh, Whitney, uh, they do really well. You know, uh, some of the other lakes that are shallower and murky, they don't do well. And why is that? What are, are they, they're getting eaten by bass and other things? Yeah, so when we stock these, we'll put them in boats. We take them out to the middle of the lake. We stock these in the middle of the lake because that's, that's the part of the lake they belong in. They don't belong near shore where there's structure and stuff like that because if we stock them near shore, you'll have all the near shore fish. So you have your bass, or your crappie, bluegill. your bluegill. Those fish that are hanging around are gonna eat these little one inch and a half fingerlings when they get stocked. So we take them out to the middle of the lake where they're the, you know, they're the king fish out there and that way they have a better chance of survival. We do the opposite with our smallmouth and our largemouth bass. We take those out in the lake and we stock those on structure. We stock those where they kind of belong. So that's, that's part of the goal with the program. We don't just back them up to the, to the uh, lake and shoot them out at the boat ramp. We, we put them where they belong. Right now they're drawing down the water, basically filtering it out to where it's mostly fry. And 
and they're gonna load them into these uh, these bags. So this is a uh, a very dialed operation. I mean, down to the millimeter, down to the pH level, down to the oxygen levels, down to the temperature. Everything has to be just right for these fish to survive. So you gotta appreciate what they're doing here because if they're not stocking these fish, you're not gonna be catching as many fish. Yeah, mostly the oxygen. This is like the vital, crucial moments right here from the bucket going into the truck. Like they go really fast to get these to wherever they're gonna go and get the oxygen in the bags and make it make it happen quick so the conditions don't change. They stay optimal for the fish to survive. The cool thing Ryan just told us about was those salinity levels that you need them not only for stripers, but they prefer some salinity for smallmouth and even largemouth. What happens is in a high salt environment, you get less disease and less fungus growing. So they're actually telling us it knows an uptick in disease after a big drought, had heavy rains, then following that, uptick in disease with the eggs, etc. Less, like it's less hatching potentially. Yeah. It's like, like, it's like, like science class where we're like, we're in like science class here. It's been like, what, 20 years since we were in college? Yeah. I actually studied fisheries ecology and okay. I forgot. Oh, you forgot, but now you're stuff. now you're remembering, I bet. Yeah, a little bit. They are hustling and bustling in here, getting it done. Uh, this is an impressive operation. This is like their Super Bowl right now because it's- <laughs> Yeah, literally. It's uh, I mean, spring, Yeah. like the, the timing of everything yep. is when they, fisheries need to- And this to is stocked. coming down to the second, like you just mentioned that they had one step that wasn't quite perfect and the 3,000 of these striper finger, striper fry died because the stripers are so yeah. sensitive. Literally out of like, out of the, the bowl for just yeah. a second, they're dead. And then he's also said a fingerling, like if you drop a fingerling, it's dead, it's done. So they have to be super careful. Now the smallies and the larges you can use a little more. You said a little more. Yeah. The yeah. Is one super sensitive. I don't know why they are, but I don't know. Very I would have thought it'd be the other way around. Like smallmouth would be super sensitive. Striper is so tough. I don't. Know. I just feel like they're tough. I'm fighting them, there's so much power. Yeah. I guess uh, they don't. Sure. They don't reach that level of power until they reach their adult form, perhaps. Maybe so. <laughs> they taste good. It's about a billion fish in there. I mean, if you look at this board, it shows you the number of uh, little fry in the bowls that they're sucking out and boxing up right now. And I'm not, I, mm, what does that say? 11 million, almost 12 million? 12 million, they had about 12 million eggs, and they turned that into 4.4 million fry for a 36.7% yield. So that's gotta be way higher than the wild. I would, oh, I would yeah. imagine, way 100%. higher. So, and if you look at their schedule here, it's like all hands on deck working 18 hours a day to get these fish to survive and go to the lakes. It's a lot of dedication. And take a look at the schedule right here. Yeah. This is the spawn schedule we're at. So you got all staff right here, but we're actually on this final day right here stock ponds and that's going to be all staff that's going on from 4 p.m. until 12 a.m. on Tuesday. That's so today. That's in 30 minutes. The beginning of the week is fertilization. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. the spawn. Yeah. And then once that happens it's like everything has to be on time. Very strict schedule. Dials. Very strict. Can't just take a lunch break, you know. <laughs> Fish are not getting oxygenated properly. so. It's hard work. It it's is. hard work, for sure. Uh, gaining a, a respect for every time I go out there and catch one of these stripers, especially. It takes a lot of work to get them to survive, to get on the line. <laughs> All right, we just saw 2.1 million fish being loaded up to head out of here. Now we're going to go look at some smallmouth fry. This looks like dirt on the bottom. So when they first catch out, it's all fish. It literally looks like dirt. And you can kind of see the mix of like the orange and the black. These mats were uh, hung yesterday. These came out of those ponds out there at the end. And so you can see the smallmouth eggs on there. Okay. 
All right, so you just you just transfer from there. We just we pull the mats. So when they when they spawn on the mats, we pull the mats and hang them over here in these troughs to incubate them. So this is all temperature control again. Uh, water 70 degrees in here, 69, 70 degrees. Sorry, we do everything in Celsius. So that's what I have to convert it in my head. We had six more mats there that we pulled this morning because they had all hatched out. So when those mats are kind of clear, uh, the cry will drop off. We'll look at the mats. If there's just some some old, like some dead eggs, some white eggs on there, we'll go ahead and pull them out so they don't get all fungusy. Those ones we pulled, you can see, you can see those orange spots down the bottom. Those are the fry off those mats. So those are about a day old. They've been hatched out about a day. Ones over there are about a week old. So these mats are representing what is actually happening on a bed. The, their eggs are sort of sticky. So they need something to lay them in. You know, they make the bed, they fan out with their tail. And they're using these artificial mats and the, the eggs are stuck to them to a certain point. Then they'll fall off and then they're just hanging on the bottom. They look like dirt. They turn into the, the little brown beauties that we all love. Man, those are big old smallies. They're actually a little skittish. If I get too close, you see them dart away. I would love to see how they feed these fish here. It's gotta be, these guys gotta be vicious. I feel like they would be. It's a pretty good idea. We might need to start selling uh, like Guggen bed mats. You know, put it in your favorite lake where you want to catch like a double digit. It's a nice big tire size mat where they can come sit on. Just wait for them to come in. Now it is time to do some fun stuff. We are going to go feed some fish. What are we at? What are we feeding today? Striped bass. Striped so, bass. Uh, siblings are the ones in the tanks right now. Oh, big these are These are some more of the domesticated fish that we've been growing out to spawn. So they're out in the ponds. We keep them out in the ponds until we move them to the building. We move them into the building and hold them for about a year, but we can only hold a hundred of them in there. So we have different year classes of fish out in the ponds that we still keep up with. And they're about the same size. So 20 pounds, those look pretty big in there. Yeah, they're, they're probably not quite 20, uh, five, up to about 14 pounds, what we had this year. Seven kilos. Kilograms. <laughs> kilograms. I mean, you probably use the measurements here that you're supposed to use, right? Like, yeah. they're, they're five to seven kilograms yeah. for the, kind of the upper end. We had one that was nine, so that's oh, that's right at about 20 pounds. We just walked probably about half a mile. Almost all these ponds are filled up. Now the ones without aerators have nothing in them yet, but we'll probably have something soon. What we're doing is we're actually skipping number 13. We said 13 or 15 was going to be fire to feed. 13, looking like there's a little algae bloom going down, probably because the nutrient dense feed that they feed these fish has been producing more waste. So that, that pond is not going to be as con conducive to feed for us to watch a feeding, but we're at 15 walking up to it. Ryan's gonna throw this feed in there, and these stripers are hopefully gonna go crazy and uh, we can see some action. And will you make that noise to hear it? Okay. Yeah, call them in. Calling them call in. in with a bucket. Woo! Will they come in like that? Okay. Oh, I feel it. They taste like yeah. shrimp. You can try them. <laughs> you can try them. Right, oh, there they, there they go. go! There they go! Oh, yeah, those Woo! are big. Those are big. Woo! Dude, look at that feeding frenzy. This reminds me when I'm on the bay yeah. and the bass school up and, and feed on freaking shad and go crazy. Woo! Woo! Where's the top water? That's a striper blitz oh, if I've man. ever seen one. Oh yeah, right here, right here. They're crushing them. Why do they hit it so hard? Dude, that That's is wild. some aggression. God. They'll knock them right out of the water. Man, my, that, my, that's just their instinct to just knock the crud yeah, out of it. Right, you know. it. Takes every ounce of willpower not to throw a blooper in there right now. Oh, oh man. Yeah, these are like 10 pounders, man. Look that's at the size we, of the boils. When we want to check them, we want to sample them. Oh, these are right there, right in front of us. Wow. So these stripers right here are approximately five to 10 pounds, I believe. Nice size. If, and, I, if I saw this on the lake, I would be have you have you never seen a striper alert. blitz on the lake before? Not not, not this size. Okay. No, I've seen like little ones, but not this big. No. Yeah, on the bay where you got those massive schools of hundreds of stripers, they'll corral thousands of bait fish. I see stuff very similar to this, which is crazy to see. It's wild. 
That was fascinating. Hey, appreciate it, Ryan. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah, Thanks thank for the you. tour. Yeah. And I appreciate all your hard work. We might not have caught a striper out of uh, PK. PK without your help. Yep. Well, they started the program recently, but I know anglers all across the country are going to be enjoying some awesome striper action. And smallies. And smallies, yeah. I do have one question. Have you ever seen or heard of a crab huh. in these waters? A mud crab? Yes. You have? <laughs> yes. It's a mud crab. It's a mud crab. Can you show the picture? Double yes. check with the picture. Right, I caught a bass the other day that spit one of these crabs out. They're an invasive species. They come okay. up from the coast, from the Gulf Coast. They've moved up through the years. So they're not supposed to be there. They're not supposed to be there now. I'm they're glad you said that because we ate it and I didn't know if there was a link limit <laughs> regulation. It, it's uh, this crab right here. Yep, that's a mud crab. A mud, a mud crab. crab. Ah, mud crab. Okay. Gotcha. Mystery solved. Mud yeah. crabs are invasive. If you catch them, just eat them. Catch them. <laughs> they look pretty tasty. They're pretty tasty. Woo! That was, that was cool. Really cool. Man, those guys really opened my eyes on the amount of dialedness they need. The down to the second and down to probably part per million salinity that they're monitoring yeah. in those tanks. Like down to a science for sure. It takes a lot for a fish to survive. Yeah. So when you see a fish in the lake, you catch it, there's a good chance it probably came from here, quite honestly. One of these hatcheries and um, I'm just glad they're out there doing it so we can go oh, yeah. have a good time on the mm -hmm. lake. So learned a lot today. Yeah. That was fun. That was really fun. Big thanks to Ryan and his crew. And they actually have a Facebook page, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be linked down below. Yeah. Uh, you go check it out. Give them, say thanks Tell to them. them. Thanks. Appreciate, appreciate their hard work. I mean, they took. They're dedicated. Yeah. They took 17 striped bass females. They turned that into 4.3 million eggs and they hatched out 2.3 million fry. Something like that. Crazy numbers. It's good ROI. That is a good ROI. That's, 17 that's fish to 2.3 million. That, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, if I if I worked here, it'd be very hard not to fish <laughs> those ponds. I gotta say, because we, we were walking by small mouth, like three pounds oh, small mouths, just swimming around everywhere. You know, stripers bust. Stripers blowing blitz. up. Like, oh. give me a top water. Come on, let's get it. I mean, come on. But yeah. yeah. They, they, they let us catch them instead, so that's pretty awesome. It is now time for us to head back to the HQ where I will be consuming the hottest hot sauce on planet Earth. Stay tuned. All right, it is time for Rackley's punishment for losing Possum Kingdom multi-species challenge. I feel a little bit bad because all I had to eat was a bacon flavored crab that was like this big, the claw. Now he's gonna have to eat, this is the end. Flatline hot sauce. It is like 8 million Scoville units hot. It is by far the spiciest thing I have personally ever eaten. And it says right there, the planet's number one hot sauce. Look at the ingredients. First ingredient, reaper peppers. You know that thing is crazy hot. Number two is capsaicin. That right there is actually what makes your tongue go crazy when you eat something spicy is the capsaicin. So they put that, I don't know how they got that as an ingredient, but that's the second ingredient. Third ingredient is water. Then it's a bunch of other peppers after that. So this thing is extremely dangerous. You really don't even want to, the serving size is one drop. We're not going to kill him. We're only going to do one serving size because that already is going to be super duper painful. And we're actually going to do something a little interesting with this. We're going to make the world's spiciest Mr. Beast cookie right here. The Feastable. I made so, sure there's no nuts. Very important. Oh, so. How are you feeling about that, Rackley? Dude, it's just totally contrasting things here. You got like a sweet cookie with a hot sauce. That's going to be gross. Oh my god, look at that blood. Dude, I get I get PTSD every time I take a take a look at this sauce. I'm just you had smaller. like 10 drops I know. of that one It was time. bad. It's very spicy. I can't talk. The spiciest thing I've ever eaten. Okay. It's coming out. One drop. One drop. That we've confirmed. That is one drop right there. How do you feel about that? I'm nervous. It's smeared on there nicely. I'm gonna try a strategy of not getting it on my yeah. tongue, lips. Oh man, I couldn't have couldn't have cut that striper. Just a bluegill. Yeah, right. it's <laughs> tricky. All right, here we go. Let's oh get it, guys. <laughs> oh, it's in there. Yeah. I'll let you do your thing. That I think that whole cookie might have been bad. I feel like. You get a, get a whole cookie, might have coated your whole mouth with that sauce. Oh no, the half cookie might have been better. I think he should have got half cookie. He's struggling, get told he's struggling. 
He can't get it down. Oh no! Oh no! He he's about to die, guys. Look, free. It's crumbly. <laughs> Wash it down. It's a pride, bro. Wash it down. It's Wash. starting to burn. It's get it down. Burn. Get it down ASAP. You can't leave it linger. You can't let it linger. You cannot let it linger. You're gonna die, bro. Bro, it has to go down in your belly. Swallow it. That's right. <laughs> this is literally the worst possible situation. When you eat hot sauce, you don't want it to stay in your tongue. Oh my gosh, Rackley. <laughs> Bro. It's real bad. <laughs> it's kicking in hard right now. Oh, We're no. shifting into five and six right now. <laughs> it's only gonna get worse. Uh, the first 30 seconds, it ramps up. Then from one minute to five minutes, you die. That's the way it goes. <clears throat> He's probably feeling it right about now. Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. This is terrible. I hate this stuff. I don't know why I even suggested this. We need to lock this stuff in a special case. Save it for the worst of occasions. The worst losses. <laughs> Bro, you're a beast. You have not taken one sip of crap. Oh, he's turning red. Oh, he's yeah. turning into a tomato. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomato time. Woo! Dude, it takes off your taste buds. It does. It just takes them right off. It is such a deep, <laughs> intense, hot. It's unbelievable. I gotta get some prime. Yeah, get the prime in there, bro. Wash it, wash a little bit of that down. It makes you cry. It makes you cry. It makes a grown man cry. Oh. All right, I can't talk right now. I just need to get through this. Oh, life. It's bad. That's one drop. It's really bad. That's one drop. That's one drop of pain. Eight million skill go units. One drop. Oh. One I think. We need to have, for these challenges, yeah. like three types of hot sauces. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below what these three need to be. Maybe the end is, is the top tier. <laughs> it's gotta be the top tier. Yeah, oh, there's no question. The end is the top tier. But maybe we have like a roulette or, or something like <laughs> on these challenges. <laughs> That's where, not reasonable, I like that. I like that know, idea. This way you don't always have to just eat in the end every single time. Like if you really wanna get the person, you give them the end, but if yeah. you're like, all right, you know, friendly challenge, you go with like, you know, yeah, first level, second level, <laughs> then the end. Because, I feel that dude, the end is too much. That that does internal things. It that does. has lasting consequences inside. <laughs> I'm gonna be on the toilet like you were on that rock. Yeah, that was rough this morning. Yeah, that rock was no fun. That could be very fun for you either later tonight or tomorrow. All right, thank you for tuning in. Staying, staying with us for this long challenge. It was fun. I, I had a great time. We had a, we had a lot of fish caught, and I enjoyed myself except for this part. So hopefully you guys did too. Subscribe here to the channel. Check out some of the new amazing merch. Use your favorite creator's code to save 10% at GuggenSquad.com, and we'll see you on another adventure right here on the channel. It's easy. Exactly. Stop the boat, man. Stop the boat. What? Why? Have you guys heard about the sale going on at GuggenSquad.com right now for Black Friday deals up to 70% off site-wide? Wait, isn't there also 30 to 70% off apparel, baits, terminal, and storage? And you forgot 20% off rods and reels. But wait, there's also 30% off bundles. It's, it's only at, at GuggenSquad.com.